know, I think there's there were always different different things that, that you can look at. I think there's some things that I maybe could have done better to put them in a better situation based on some of the defenses that we, that we were seeing. There were there were some times where um, you know in the in the USC game maybe a little bit more pressure oriented than what had, what it had anticipated going in to the game, and so some adjustments you got to make there, and then some some little things that guys can do better in, in certain situations just from an execution standpoint. What do you see from that Stanford secondary? And other? Really specialized in takeaways this season. Yeah, th yeah, that's a that's a really good group back there. You know, I, in in my opinion, kind of makes that defense go. You know, you, you say mo most defenses start from the front and work their way to the back end. I think that back end allows their defense to do a lot of a lot of different things. You know, just and anytime you have the ability to to play close middle and to play some man coverage, and, and those guys give them the ability to do that. They've got length out there, athleticism. They can run. You know, and so that's um, definitely a big challenge for us. How is Mason look? Being back, and looks like he's in that backup role now behind Daryl. Yeah, still trying to get comfortable. That, that you know, even since he was in there, there's some things that have changed terminology-wise, and I don't even remember some of the things that have, that have changed since he was in there. You know, he'll get in there and be like, "Coach, I don't even know what that play was." <laughs> and, and so, um, just trying to get him ready and, and filter through some of those things that, that he hasn't done yet. Um, you know, trying to get back to some, some throwing form and. You know, and so it's been, been kind of hard on him getting him up to speed, but we got to be ready for all those scenarios. And so he's got to be ready to get in there um, potentially and be ready to roll. Why the timing now? I know you mentioned Connor and, and Aiden wanted to preserve their red shirts. Why did it feel like now was the time to make sure that he was back in that spot so they didn't have to potentially burn those shirts? Yeah, you know, I mean, re really, you know, with the, with the injury situation and then just you know, a lot of it is kind of having a contingency plan. Um, you just want to want to really be prepared for all scenarios that, that could come up. And, as we've seen here, as I've seen in the past, you can you can go through three in a game and, and be right there. And so, just want to have those guys ready for any, any possible scenarios. Coach, even though you've had a bye week, what is it like to kind of get ready for a Thursday game? Even though it's kind of a short week, even though you guys have had last week, what is just take us through what that preparation is like for a Thursday game? Um, you know, it, it is different because of the because of the bye week. Um, you know, where normally right now you'd be really feeling crunched. Right. And, later days than normal and, and probably longer practices than normal just right. to be able to get things in but because of that bye week we were we were basically able to take both weeks that you would have in pre or a full week in preparation and and you, know, you spread that over a week and a half and and so it gives you you know two opportunities to get tuesday practices two opportunities to get wednesday practices and so we did spend last week with some stanford preparation and that made it so this week um you know we, we weren't so stressed trying to get reps at different things we had in the game plan you mentioned last week that a lot of the things in the run game you did against Colorado, you'd actually introduce some of those concepts at USC. Is part of all of this that we saw in the breakout with Colorado do as much to, to health of guys having enough bodies and people available to do what you've been wanting to do all year? I think health is, health is, one, is one, you know, and Thomas Tyner is one, a good example of that where the, the first part of the year was he had some of those nagging injuries. And he's full speed now. He's, he's Looked really, really good in practice. He's you know, way more knowledgeable as far as the offense and, um, and, and the concepts, the terminology, all those things. And so when you get those guys more and more comfortable as the season goes with what, with what they're doing, then you can start to build those packages. And, and you know, so we were able to be kind of creative with, with that stuff against Colorado, get some of those groups on the field that involve those running backs and kind of mix, mix and match them a little bit based on their skill set and maybe what their strengths are. And, um, you know, and so definitely looking to continue that going forward. Daryl threw the ball downfield well, but did he also manage the game in terms of reads and, and getting out of plays and changing things from time to time? How did he handle all of that? You know, I, th I think he did a good job with that. You know, I, w I would say from that standpoint, probably his best game since he's been here in, in managing those situations. Did not have a lot of missed reads. Um, you know, and then I, I alluded to it earlier on, but the, the ability to have some of those explosive plays downfield and some of those chunk yardage plays in, in the throw game, you know, so not only does the defense feel like they have to defend it, um, but then what it, what it can do for you from an offensive standpoint, you know, all of a sudden you're down in the red zone that quickly, and now we just got to get better when we're down there. Coach Baldwin kind of talked today about the importance of using both Noah and uh, Thule as blocking tight ends, and that's why the run game maybe succeed a little bit. It's Colorado. What do you guys like about that two tight end set, and then specifically against a physical team like Stanford? Um, you know, it, we, you would say that Stanford is, you know, their their defense has had to defend that, you know, right. because they've had to defend that with their with their own offense, you know. But the, uh, you know, 
some of the things it does defensively, it'll calm the defense down a lot of times, so you don't see as many looks as you can sometimes see in some smaller personnel groups, 11 personnel, 10 um, that have been our base. You know, and, then, and then the other thing has really been just the development of those two tight ends. You know, a year ago, you probably wouldn't even think twice about having, having both of them on the field because you were just hoping to, to have one of them do their job efficiently. Um, but they've become really, really good blocking tight ends and, and they've really taken on that role. And, and, and so it's allowed us to, to be more multiple on offense, which I think we always wanted to be, but had some limitations that, where we couldn't be as multiple as we wanted to be. We see Jake out here in street clothes. What's his role when he's out in the practice field and also in meeting rooms being working to get healthy? Um, you know, he hasn't been in the meeting room too much. Um, you know, we're kind of starting to get him back into that mode a little bit, but we want to get him back in there as soon as possible. But love seeing him out here. You know, I know he wants to be out here as much as he can, so he comes out here. I, and I think it provides a boost for those guys just to see him, you know, him to offer some words of encouragement. And the sooner and later, get him back in the meeting room and really get him involved you know, from, a, from a mental standpoint. At least. Oh.